Hi, my name is Pat, and this is my channel, Book Chat with Pat, and I'm glad that you're here. Today I'm presenting my third episode on Irish poetry. For the month of March, in support of the Irish Readathon, I'm devoting my Poetry Thursday episodes to Irish poets. I've presented Seamus Heaney and Padraig Otuma uh, in the first two weeks of March. And today I would like to talk about Louis Magnice, a poet who has deep personal significance to me. And next Thursday, I'll conclude my series on Irish poets, for now. Louis McNeese was born in Belfast in September 12th, 1907. His father was an Anglican clergyman and eventually a bishop in the Church of Ireland. The family moved from Belfast to Carrickfergus in County Antrim, in MacNeese's infancy. And this is a setting that is featured in uh, many of his poems. MacNeese's mother suffered from a very deep clinical depression after Louis's very difficult birth followed by uterine cancer. She would enter into an asylum in Dublin when Louis was five and he never saw her again. <clears throat> she died of tuberculosis when he was seven. While his mother was sick, Louis's older brother, William, who had Down syndrome, uh, was also sent away to an institution in Scotland. These very sad events would have a profound effect on the rest of Magnese's life and on his poetry. Magnese and his sister, were sent to boarding school um, in England when their father remarried. Uh, but his school years were largely happy ones. He eventually went to Merton College, Oxford, where he met the poet W.H. Auden. And he's often associated with the Auden group of poets. McNeese studied Greek and Latin at Oxford and continued writing poetry. After university, he taught uh, in the classics department at Birmingham University from 1930 through 1936. He sent some of his poetry at this time uh, to T.S. Eliot. McNeese lived in London from 1936 through 1940, and during that time, he published several volumes of poetry. He was also included in an anthology that was edited by W.B. Yeats, and he also published a translation of Aeschylus's play Agamemnon. During World War II, McNeese went to work for the BBC, where by the end of the war, he had written and produced the scripts for over 60 radio programs. During this time, he also published several plays. He became sick while on an expedition for the BBC and ended up with a bad case of bronchitis. This soon became pneumonia. He was hospitalized in London in August of 1963, and he died in early September. He was just shy of his 56th birthday. McNeese is claimed by both England and Ireland, but there is definitely a generation of Irish poets, including Paul Muldoon and Michael Longley, who consider him to have been a major influence on their poetry. So I'd like to read a few of his poems. The first one that I'll read um, is anthologized here uh, in the Penguin Book of Irish Poetry. <clears throat> this poem is called Autobiography, and it conveys the profound sense of sadness that Louis McNeese carried with him from his childhood. <clears throat> 
autobiography. In my childhood, trees were green and there was plenty to be seen. Come back early or never come. My father made the walls resound. He wore his collar the, the wrong way round. Come back early or never come. My mother wore a yellow dress, gently, gently, gentleness. Come back early or never come. When I was five, the black dreams came. Nothing after was quite the same. Come back early or never come. The dark was talking to the dead. The lamp was dark beside my bed. Come back early or never come. When I woke, they did not care. Nobody, nobody was there. Come back early or never come. When my silent terror cried, nobody, nobody replied. Come back early or never come. I got up. The chilly sun saw me walk away alone. Come back early or never come. Next, I'd like to read a poem entitled Apple Blossom. This is a much later poem. This is from 1957. And here, MacNeese illustrates the idea that there is still cause for hope, even after tragic events, even something as cataclysmic as the fall from Eden. So this is Apple Blossom. The first blossom was the best blossom for the child who never had seen an orchard, for the youth whom whiskey had led astray. The morning after was the first day. The first apple was the best apple for Adam before he heard the sentence. When the flaming sword endorsed the fall, the trees were his to plant for all. The first ocean was the best ocean for the child from streets of doubt and litter, for the youth for whom the skies unfurled, his first love was his first world. But the first verdict seemed the worst verdict when Adam and Eve were expelled from Eden. Yet even when the bitter gates clanged to, the sky beyond was just as blue. For the next ocean is the first ocean, and the last ocean is the first ocean. And however often the sun may rise, a new thing dawns upon our eyes. For the last blossom is the first blossom, and the first blossom is the best blossom. And when from Eden we take our way, the morning after is the first day. And finally, <clears throat> I'd like to read one of his most famous and most frequently anthologized poems. This one is called The Sunlight on the Garden. This poem has great personal significance to me. Um, when, when I was in my last year of college, I was working on my senior thesis on the poetry of John Milton, of all things. I was in the home stretch of my last year, but I had hit a bit of a slump in my writing and I was having a major crisis of self-confidence. I had come home one weekend for a family event and I found myself sitting up until all hours talking about the thesis that I wasn't writing with my father talking about feeling stuck. I don't remember what I said, and I don't remember what he said, but I know that I talked through what I was trying to write about. 
and he restored my self-confidence. I went upstairs to my bedroom and I started to write and I just kept writing. And I didn't hit any more slumps along the way. That spring, as my senior year was coming to a close, I put the final touches on the thesis and I decided to dedicate it to my father who believed in me more than anyone ever had. At this time, my father was very sick. I don't think I realized how sick he was because I was 21 years old and you don't think that your parents are going to be sick and die. I was called home again that spring to what would be my father's final days. And he was too sick to read my thesis and I, I was never able even to show it to him. Um, he never saw the dedication, which would have meant the world to him. And so he died exactly one month to the day before my college graduation, something else that he would have loved. One of my college professors, one of my thesis readers, wrote me a beautiful letter of condolence at that time. And she included in her letter this poem by Louis McNeese, The Sunlight on the Garden. I read this poem over and over again, hundreds of times that first year after my father's death. And it's why Louis McNeese will always have a special place in my heart. So this is the sunlight on the garden. The sunlight on the garden hardens and grows cold. We cannot cage the minute within its nets of gold. When all is told, we cannot beg for pardon. Our freedom as freelances advances toward its end. The earth compels. Upon it, sonnets and birds descend. And soon, my friend, we shall have no time for dances. The sky was good for flying, defying the church bells and every evil iron siren and what it tells. The earth compels. We are dying, Egypt, dying. And not expecting pardon, hardened in heart anew, but glad to have sat under thunder and rain with you, and grateful too for sunlight on the garden. So that's a little bit about Louis McNeese, another great Irish poet. We'll conclude this Irish series next Thursday. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope that you're doing well. I'll speak with you again soon. Take care.